Well, good morning, afternoon, evening, whenever you see this. This is Dee with I and Probably Insights. And today we're going to be talking about making your emotions working for you as an INFP. And I'm so happy to have a guest speaker here. We have Carl Johann Schroeder, who is a spiritual teacher and also a life coach who has um, decades of experience and theories and classes and seminars and whatnot, um, written a book and everything else. So uh, about different issues. And we're, today we're going to be talking about uh, the emotions. And I will say, uh, I'm going to let him tell about himself, but I will say, and I think you might be interested in this, but he's come this way route from um, originally from computer background from MIT. So uh, that's a great combination. So welcome, Carl. Thank you. And I, and I like that you're future oriented, future thinking, because I haven't finished the book. I'm writing a book now. Okay. Um, all the other stuff you said is is uh, accurate. I've been working on my theories for decades and mm -hmm. uh, yeah, teaching different classes, meetups for many years. So I'm um, happy to be here. Thank you. Yes. Yeah, yes. So um, can you just tell us a little bit about yourself, how you came came about um, getting into this line of work from uh, your computer background? Absolutely. So uh, I went to college for uh, to study computers. And mm -hmm. while I was in college, I realized that uh, computers are really just kind of a lot of tricks, you know, a lot of mm -hmm. machine tricks. And I was more interested in uh, the humanities, philosophy, art, and such. So I, I did some of both. You know, I graduated in computers, and that was a useful degree for mm -hmm. having a job making money for many years. But uh, my real interest, I, it became very clear to me, was in spirituality. I had a spiritual awakening after college. And uh, so I, that became my real line of interest, you know, sort of a writer, philosopher with a day job. Um, so, yeah, I've, I've studied uh, and developed my own theories uh, for many years. I, I'm very interested in mindfulness and meditation, uh, dream interpretation. Um, you know, I'm interested in what really works. Uh, okay. And so I... You know, I mean, I've started studied some Carl Jung too, and I know a little bit about the uh, the INFP and all that stuff, um, the Myers Briggs system. But you're you're the expert. I, I defer to you. So <laughs> I'm excited about this conversation. Um, yeah. So it was in 2020 that uh, Spirit. When I say Spirit, I mean sort of a capital S, like all the uh, you know spiritual. Um, transcendent kind of inspirational guidance that we can get you know mm -hmm. all those channels of, of intuition and guidance you know what it means to be human more than a machine <laughs> more than the machines that I was working with during the day um, all that guidance came to me and said okay Carl you need to do this full-time now so I've been doing this full-time since 2020 and uh, you know I've, I have clients I coach and I, I run meetups and classes online and um, I'm working on uh, as I said I'm writing a book um, developing more materials uh, to launch more of a, a full business. I, I need to have this be more sustainable because for a while there, I just really needed to do a lot of self-healing. Uh, when people make the leap into, you know, a real leap of faith in your own abilities um, and transition out of the nine to five working world, you, you have to dig deep and, and heal a lot of stuff inside. And a lot of that is very emotional work. So um, so I've worked a lot with my own emotions. I know what really works. I, I know what a lot of emotions are for, so we can talk about that kind of stuff. And that's a lot of what often my clients are interested in help with is, is understanding the patterns of their life, why certain emotions come up, what they mean, how to process that, how to get to a deeper level of self-knowing and self-confidence. Uh, so yeah, the, the my, my business is, I call it, inner self's mastery mm -hmm. and meetups I've been running for years uh, I call it inner selves for outer mastery and the idea is that everyone has a world within themselves all these personalities all these emotions all these uh, you know the kind of stuff that uh, philosophy and psychology really deal with and science doesn't really have a handle on but all the states of consciousness they they are real beings they are real parts of ourselves so how to work with that and how it all fits together uh, that's what I help people with. So 
So yeah, uh, Inner Selves Mastery, Carl Johann Schroeder, you can find my materials online and I have a kind of my version of church. Uh, every Sunday I have a I have a class on Meetup that uh, people are welcome to check out Inner Selves for Outer Mastery. I think if you Google these days, you can find everything. So um, that's that's yeah. where I'm at these now. Yeah, and I'll have a link to, to that. Uh, you have a website too, I believe. You still have the website? Well, currently... Um, the, yeah, I have a domain name, InnerSelvesMastery.com. Currently, it's still just pointing to a Facebook page. There's also uh, a newsletter okay. sign up, uh, signupism.com. So sign up ISM for Inner Selves Mastery. Uh, that that goes to a, a MailChimp newsletter sign up. And I've got a YouTube channel. So one way or another, you follow my links, you find my stuff. Um, okay. Well, yep. I was just I was just thinking I'll I'll have it in the description box below for anybody that's interested. Um, your Great. links of several of, of your links. And that's how I actually met Carl was through a meetup. Um, it was during the pandemic and staying at home and I wanted to be around people. And um so just sort of looked around and that, that's how I found him. <laughs> it's uh I've been going to some of his meetups, I haven't been in a while, but um, they are in, interesting, and no, no, almost no two people are there the same time consecutively. You get to meet different people from all over that show up too, which is always interesting. Too. So, yeah. Um, yeah, so so great. What what I was mentioning earlier, um, before the recording, and then I will explain. Um, this is INFP channel and INFPs know what INFPs are, but um, those who may be watching, since this is the first chat I've had with someone who's not really in the what we call MBTI community, we have a community now. I I don't know, I don't, don't even know if I'm in the community, <laughs> but I hear that buzzword all the time in videos. Um, and there'll be a lot of other people who will be interested in this um, who may not know what we're talking about. And I call it alphabet soup, and I don't want to get into that part. But what an INFP is and why I thought this emotion would be great to, to discuss is that um, the I stands for introvert, the N stands for intuition, the F stands for feeling, and the P stands for perceiving. So that's what the INFP is, and we do lead with our feelings that's our dominant function is our feelings or emotions we know what our emotions are we know who we are as a person our core values um and it's interesting when you're talking about that i find it interesting talking about having inner an inner world and there's all kinds of inner world we have a great um creative life inside our world is internal <laughs> We need to come out to the external world. External world needs to, we need to cohabitate. <laughs> the external world needs to have an internal world and vice versa. So uh, we have a very, very vivid uh, daydreaming um, capacity, very, very creative. Um, and so we know what our emotions are and we have very deep um, and strong, intense um, emotions. And we have been told, most of us, at some point in time, at least once, if not a million times, that we are too intense for other people. It happens in our personal relationships. It happens at work. And it can interfere. It can actually interfere in in, in life. So uh, that having been said, I'm excited um, to hear what you have to say. Um, just take it however you want to take it uh, about how that works. Um, the emotions, um, how we can get it to work for us instead of turning other people off who don't have as much feelings as we do. Sure, sure. And uh, and I'll say, uh, you know, I relate to a lot of what you're saying. I, I believe I'm an INFJ. Oh, okay. Um, I, I have a friend who's uh, really into the Myers-Briggs, and I'm trying to remember. I was INF something, so P or J. Okay. Um which is that judging. So uh, yeah. I guess the difference would be just, um, I relate to everything you're, say, you're saying, um, and I have maybe that J is the judging, a little, a little stronger sense of like, this is the way things should be. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna put my judgments in a, in a good sense 
onto mm -hmm. things rather than the P of perceiving. Um, I don't know. How would you characterize the P versus the J? Well, the I, actually, that the perceiving actually is a judging function. It it, it can be um, confusing, but I will say, if you're an INFJ, welcome because INFPs love INFJs and vice versa. <laughs> On the flip side, we have no cognitive functions in, in common. We, <laughs> we, we, what we do is that we lead by our feelings and you lead, you want outer harmony. And INFJ wants outer harmony, if, if you can relate to, relate to that. Um, you lead with um, the intuition. Your dominant function is your intuition. Your, your in introverted it is introvert yeah i'm getting into alphabet soup now but we're the exact opposite uh we we can scan the room but we keep things to ourselves and we lead with our feelings whereas you want the um infjs want uh external harmony and they tend not to know who they are inside which is why maybe you came up with these um theories or mantras or whatever of the steps of how to get to the point of um, dealing with your emotions on the inside mm -hmm. because, well, it's it's, it, because it's external. You're right. more external, we're more internal, if that right. makes sense. Yeah. Okay, fair enough. I mean, I would relate to the sense of, yeah, I mean, I have a strong sense of the way yeah. the world should be and I'm right. not... I'm not going to be shy about it. I'm going to get out there <laughs> and I'm going to let people know what I think. And, yeah. you know, I'm not going to be bossy or mean about it, but right. you know, I have some really strong visions of the way the world ought to be to uh -huh. set everyone free. You know, I love structure yeah. to set people free, not structure to imprison. So, yeah. so yeah, I have some points of comparison there. So what's interesting, um, I've long been interested in all kinds of, you know, personality theories. There's the Myers-Briggs, there's the Enneagrams, there's, right. of course, astrology, there's, uh, I don't know, you can relate to tarot cards, all kinds of systems. Um, actually, a friend of mine uh, years ago came up with a system pretty similar to INF, I mean, to, to, to the Myers-Briggs system. I uh, had an approach of uh, a long list of questions that would kind of categorize you in the polarity of four categories. So similar to the Myers-Briggs. Right. And he was a real fan of the Myers-Briggs. Um, but anyway, so so the way I look at personality systems, um, it's a starting point for understanding where our strengths and weaknesses are. Mm -hmm. And everyone's goal, whether they embrace it or not, but everyone's goal is to have a wonderful life in this world. You know, I, I hope it isn't somebody's goal to like say, well, you know, I'm so different. I'm so better than or worse than or whatever. I just need to get out of here. <laughs> you know, it's yeah. like, no, we, we need to be in the world. And, and it's a great starting point to um, categorize our strengths and weaknesses with some kind of personality system that, that gives us a lot of validation, that gives us a lot of confidence. It's like, okay, I'm not, I, I'm not, you know, a freak. I, I, I make some sense and there are other people like me. It, it personality systems say it's wonderful because it, it gives a sense of like well the whole world is meant to fit together you know there are these different kinds of people right. and there might be ways that different kinds of people do or don't get along mm -hmm. but at least we could know about that so i could watch out and say you know oh you're going in this direction i'm not going to judge that as wrong it's just simply different it's in contrast mm -hmm. to, to my strength mm -hmm. um so yeah, I see a lot of personality systems as as templates for self awareness on the road to us all getting along and making this a better world. Um, so what I've come to understand is that there's kind of the old way of looking at things and the new way of looking at things, the old paradigm and the new paradigm. And the old, I, I sometimes I feel like uh, you know Sesame Street or Mr. Rogers says, there's the old and the new. And he's like, but yeah, the um, the idea being that the old paradigm is limited. It's 
it it doesn't really work. It's what people have been doing un unconsciously or consciously, and that's why the world is messed up the way it is. Mm -hmm. You know, we've made a mess of the world in just a few centuries of technology. It's amazing what humans can do. Um, mm -hmm. And I want to turn that around and say, you know, because there are a lot of people who say, look at the world. Obviously, humanity is bad and we should just, you know, there are people who just are cheering for humanity to go extinct so the planet yeah. can revert back to a garden state. And like, and then my attitude is like, no, nature wanted us. Nature wants us. We can do amazing things in a really mm -hmm. short period of time. So we did some big mistakes in a short period of time, but we can do really great stuff in a short period of time. We can clean up the planet and do amazing stuff so nature doesn't have to rely on slow evolution over millions of years we are meant to take charge in a in a very cooperative respectful way with nature so this isn't the old system of domination of mm -hmm. you know manifest destiny you know humans are meant to like run the planet into the ground and have a party until you know it's a mess and we don't want to clean up we just want to get out of here and go to another planet i don't know elon musk wants to Right. Take us to Mars or something. It's like, come on, let's let's focus on this planet. It's, got, oh, it's already got so much more potential than Mars. Um, yeah, every time I see his spaceship go up, and everybody's excited, and they 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 camp out for days, you know, this that and the other. And I'm just thinking, whenever I see the rocket go up, I'm just thinking how many people can be fed on that one rocket cost, you know? <laughs> right. Um, and it's ironic too to think the the story is it's quite probable Mars had life before Earth. So, yeah. uh, and there's even the the possibility that a meteor a meteor or something came seeded life on Earth. So, there you know Earth goes life goes through waves in the universe, but mm -hmm. Earth is really clearly a really peak place to live. So let's take care of it. So let's work. Let's all work on understanding our personality types our emotional strengths and weaknesses and i see the goal as coming from our talent our home-based personality type and developing our strengths in all the other areas um, it may not come naturally but i want to be able to do some of everything um, i don't want to have to be a hermit i don't want to have to like say well other people can do that stuff but i can't I want to be able to say, okay, maybe it's harder for me, but I want to be able to do that stuff too. Um, I mean, to the degree that's appropriate. So, so a big point is um, perhaps I should make it clear. Like, uh, three very archetypal, uh, three components to our being. Um, so there's there's the human being. So that's that's our human body, our human perspective on Earth, and then there's our soul, our soul, sort of picture it up here, you know, metaphorically, the diagrams and such, but um, our human self on earth and our soul is the intelligence of the universe and our place in it. So our soul is that deep sense of I have value, I have a purpose, I have a destiny, I have great things I could do if I just, you know, got the right support and understood myself. And kind of floating in between the, these polarity of the, the body and the soul is our spirit, our spiritual consciousness, where we can be aware of all these different things in life. We can relate to being human. We can relate to something higher, transcendent, spiritual. We can relate to things without actually totally being them. We, as a consciousness, we can sort of jump in and out of perspectives. And so that's what we need to get used to is that there's this amazing polarity of, yes, we have a human existence on a human body to manage. And we have this spiritual guidance system, some kind of amazing transcendent place in the universe. And in between, you know, we're a work in progress. We're all a hot mess. We're, we're learning to run this system as best we can. Right. So we all have a spiritual personality some kind of some kind of purpose some kind of we we have different things we're we're good at so this is where i think the personality systems come in is that you start getting a sense of like i'm this kind of person what am, what am i good at what is my contribution to society what is my contribution to the planet 
I don't want to see the planet die. I don't want to see society break down in war. I want to know what am I good at and offer that to people, to the earth, and make this a better world. So we all have strengths and weaknesses. We're learning about them. And I like the perspective of the, the archetype of the wounded healer, which is, uh, I don't know, if, do you ever talk about that? Does that come up in sort of the Myers-Briggs approach? Um, not too not too much. It, the healer itself comes up. I haven't heard the term wounded healer um, okay. too much. Yeah. The archetype of the wounded healer, healer I think one of them is the uh, Chiron. Chiron was the centaur. Now, you know, in Greek mythology, half human, half horse, the centaurs were generally wild creatures. Um, it represented sort of the, 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 the worst of both worlds. You know, the, the horse part is the wild animal and the human part of a centaur is uh, some ability to, to run things. But the only centaur who was wise was Chiron. And he has a, a, an astro... Uh, What's I like a planetoid named after him, and it, it's a big name in astrology. But the idea is that Chiron uh, is the wounded healer. He he's a wise centaur. He represents the best of human reasoning plus animal desires put together. And we have to heal ourselves. And Chiron is there to guide that kind of healing. So the archetype of the wounded healer is that we're um you know we're, we're all a hot mess we have some problems we need to learn how to heal ourselves and when we learn how to heal ourselves that will become our strength we now understand that part of life because we've been through it you know we can't just like understand something from a distance we have to really have hands-on experience so we we heal ourselves for example from childhood trauma mm -hmm. you know a great example of a wounded healer and i i like more the term a self-healing healer. So it's it's when you know what your problems are, you face your problems, your challenges, and you learn how what what kind of help do I need? How do I heal myself? And when I become strong, now I can help anybody else who has that kind of problem. Um, so a great great example is Louise Hay. Have you heard of her? Mm -hmm. Yeah, Louise Hay. So her her thing. I mean, she's got a whole publishing house, Hay Publishing House. She huh. it's, it's a platform for a lot of um, you know, healers, uh, philosophers, psychology, spiritual teachers. Um, the thing is, she had a really traumatic childhood. You know, I don't, I don't know her whole biography, but it, basically, a really damaged start to life. But she found her inner strengths, um, probably with the help of you know various mindfulness and personality systems or whatever. You tune into your strengths. And you realize like, okay, I'm strong in these areas. I'm weak in these areas. What do I need to do to become strong in all areas? We heal ourselves. And then that is our super strength. That's our spiritual personality. That's what we have to offer the world. Yeah. And to, and to translate that, that that's, that's a good, good, good thought. And I'm glad you brought all that up. And to kind of tie that into um, what a lot of people who just do uh, say like Myers Briggs or psychology or Corian, and there are a lot of viewers out there who are like that. To tie that all in would be something similar to what we uh, talk about as um, as our inferior functions, our blind spot. Uh, all all the personality types have a blind spot, so I guess that's what what you're talking about. Um, other people refer to it as the dark night of the soul. Uh, that's what came to my mind when you were talking about that to heal the 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 woundedness within you and um and in the uh, myers briggs community the mbti youtube community they talk a lot about the blind spot um learning to um and starting creators are starting to get i i don't know my channel but creators are starting to get um more into um how to deal with that blind spot and um, how to um, accept it. Uh, I have talked about, uh, we have, uh, I have talked about on my channel about the inferior functions to make them stronger, to get to know them, which I think is a lot of what you're saying. Um, 
because you do heal once you understand that there is a part about you that you don't know that's there. I think we do know on some level it's there, but we don't want to acknowledge that it's there. And we don't want to face that it's there. But it's something, as you were talking about, something in order to grow. Um, and we can all do this. We're, we're not locked into one thing. Like if you want to do um, a personality test, for example, and say, um, well, I'm an INFP or I'm an INFJ or whatever, ISTJ, whatever. Um, I've got to act this way. This is this is the list. I, I've Googled it and a lot of people do. Googled it and it says these things. This is what INFPs do. This is the way I need to act. This is the way I need to 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 bring that. This is the way I am, and I'm. That's it. Um, there's a lot of world out out there. Um, what I want to ask you about, which I think um, kind of ties into what what you're you're talking about. It sounds like the same thing, just um, different language. Um, same book. D different page, but but same book. What I want to ask you about is um, just a lot of INFPs. We are very creative, and we are very empathic, but we don't put things in action. Uh, we keep it to ourselves. Tend to keep it to ourselves. So, um, and you you mentioned something earlier on about uh, you don't want to be a hermit. You want to be someone who wants to help save the world. Um, and make it a better place in whatever way you can. What advice would you give um, to someone? And this is very common in the INFP community is uh, we have things that we would like to do and we have an idea of what we would like to do, um, but we don't know how to go about doing it or we don't think we can do it. Um, so what would you say to someone like like that to get started, to get your foot out the door? Uh, besides what I've told them is you uh, nobody's going to ring your doorbell. <laughs> You've got to step outside your door, literally. So what kind of advice would you give to someone, suggestions of, of using their emotion? Because we do lead with emotion and um, not get overwhelmed. We get overwhelmed very easily in the external world. Absolutely. See, I entirely relate. And, and that's exactly where learning to work with emotions, making emotions work for you. Mm -hmm. So so what I would say is, um, I remember I was contrasting the old paradigm, which mm -hmm. is dysfunctional, you know, kept us alive, but a lot of seriously dysfunctional attitudes in society toward pretty much everything. And the new paradigm where we all realize we we all have strengths and weaknesses. So starting with a, a personality system, it, it validates us. We can move from the old system where, hey, some people are just good and right and should be ruling the world and other people are just wrong and should die. I mean, it's that blatant, you know, it's like the old system, very tribal, who's ever got the most extroverted willingness to dominate and conquer, they end up running things and everybody else you know, you're just supposed to hide or, you know, don't, don't be seen, you know, it's like, right. um, so, so the wonderful, so the first step of healing is just some kind of personality system that gives you a, a, a validity. I, I have a right to exist. I'm a kind of person. I have strengths and weaknesses. I start to move away from these absolute judgments of who are the good people and who are the bad people. That's the tribalism that's ruined the world. And move more toward like, okay, people have different strengths and weaknesses, depending on the situation, I could be a real star, I could be who I'm, what's needed, you know, so we all need to find the places where we belong. Um, can't think of the quote off of my top of head, but some, uh, some feminist author talking about how everyone is like a, like a flower, and you got to find the right garden where you belong. But um, so, so yeah, now to actually, so you start developing a sense of, okay, I reject the judgments of, you know, my wounded childhood, my wounded past. I reject the people who wanted me to just shut up and go away. I belong somewhere. I have a value. Um, now, how do I start acting on that? So people start developing a dream. They, they pursue a hobby or something, uh, you know, 
whatever whatever turns you on, whatever excites you in life. So follow your passions. You know, a lot of a lot of teachers talk about that, like Joseph Campbell saying, you know, follow your bliss. Uh, Bashar talking about your excitement. Uh, Abraham Hicks talking about, uh, you know, your happiness. Uh, follow something that makes you feel more alive. So that's where you start getting a sense of like, you know, I, I might really belong in this world. I, I have yeah. something to offer. I'm excited. I have a pa purpose. I have a passion. I have a destiny. And then that's where you start talking about, you know, INFP or J or whatever we are. Um, <laughs> we tend to be more introverted and we tend to get easily overwhelmed. We're not the, uh, the cold hearted narcissists who are yeah. currently kind of selected for in our society's evolution. We're, we're more the sensitive ones who care and it, it's easy to get emotionally overwhelmed. And then what? We're supposed to just push those emotions down. You know, there are all these success formulas. Just do this, 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 and this. Forget how you feel. Just do it. It'll work. It's like, no, we're the kind of people who say, no, the emotions matter. I can't do stuff and my emotions are out of whack, out of line. And that's good. That's healthy. So back to what I was saying about the three main parts of, of the self to understand the, the human being on earth, the soul up here, and a spiritual consciousness sort of moving in between, trying different things. So the goal is start moving in the direction of the your dreams. Start imagining like, well, let's put the limitations aside. I don't want to get overwhelmed by like, I don't have enough money. I don't have enough charisma i don't have enough courage i don't have enough friends you know it's scarcity thinking that's so easy to think of all the reasons why i can't do something but let's think about some of the reasons why i can do something because i care because this is the kind of person i am this means a lot to me i have a passion for this i'm the kind of person who should be there supported able to do this stuff so you start moving in the direction of some of the things you want to do and don't buy into the materialist society. Don't buy into like, doesn't matter how you feel, just do it, just get it done. No, feelings come first. The thoughts come first. The inspirations come first. So you work on manifesting some of that. And yeah, the emotions will come up. Now embrace those emotions because the old system was all about crushing your emotions and you can't make them go away. That just makes them worse. You know, you turn fear of a particular thing into general anxiety of like, well, I can't function in this world because everybody makes fun of me. No, nobody respects my uh, emotions. So we've got to respect ourselves, create safe places to feel these emotions and develop, you know, listen to, you know, like my theories or other people's theories about what emotions are for. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, what, let me ask you, what, the way you were raised or with Meyer Briggs or both, what are our emotions for? What are they coming from? What is your sense of it? My emotions, um, that's a good question. I have to stop, I have to stop and think and think about that. The first word that came to my mind, mind actually was fear. That's the first word that I thought about. Um, mm -hmm from my upbringing was fear, I, I, I guess, uh, not as an emotion, but the other emotions surrounding it. Um, um, and let's, let's, so let's use some of that mindfulness. Yeah. Have the courage to explore an emotion instead of just run away from it. Because the, the old system, the old dysfunctional society was all about labeling which emotions are good. Always, right. always go for the happiness, more parties, more whatever. Right. And which emotions are bad. Don't do fear. Don't do anger. Don't do whatever, unless it, you know, to your advantage or something, because there's a lot of like, people who are going to use anger as rage to blow up and, you know, control people. But, um, you know, depending on your culture, your gender, you know, women are supposed to feel some emotions, not others. Right. You know, emotions get very divided, you know, which ones are good and which ones are bad. If you're a woman, it's okay to cry. But don't right. be don't be angry and assertive because then you're just bitchy. And if you're a man, <laughs> you're a man don't right. cry. Then right. you're showing your weakness. But be angry, be forceful. That's good. You know, it's very divided. It's right. absurd. It's and absurd. we have and we have talked about that a lot. Um, 
uh, I have on my channel and other people's channels too have, have talked about that, that uh, INFPs particularly um, on YouTube, it seems like uh, have been depicted as crybabies, uh, male or female. I, for one, don't cry. And in my household, and I've said this many, many times, anger was the only emotion that was allowed. But I have gone through, and I read somewhere, and I had a poll on, on, on my um, YouTube channel, how many emotions do you think you have? And actually it says, I think we are supposed to have over 40 emotions. I mean, emotions, that may be even small um, no, number. We have so many different emotions. And it was interesting how people thought they may have five or six or maybe 10 most were really in the low numbers. And I'm thinking, no, we have just dozens and dozens and dozens of emotions. And I think we have to, rec as you say, recognize that. And once we recognize that, we don't tend to be as overwhelmed with it when it comes up. Yeah. Yeah. So I want to be mindful of the the time. We can sort yeah. of take a, take a leisurely approach to the conversation. But let me try skipping ahead. Let, okay. Let's Let's get to the punchline, right? Let's get yes, or maybe a uh, not violent punchline, but uh, <laughs> get to the bottom line here. Okay, you're right. You're right, Dee. I, it's beautiful. There's so many different kinds of emotions. Let's use our mindfulness to notice what emotions we have and probably start discovering new ones. Um, here's the point: every emotion uh, can be positive or negative depending on how you handle it, and for the most part. The whole old society, old system of saying which emotions are good, which emotions are bad, right there, that pretty much guarantees all emotions are going to be dysfunctional. Mm -hmm. Because in fact, it's how you handle it. So that means that there can be good anger. There can be good fear, depending on how you handle it. It also oh, means okay. there, there could be bad love. There could be mm -hmm. bad happiness, depending on how you handle it. And you think about it, you can think of examples right away. It's like, what would be good anger? Well, wouldn't that be anger that motivates somebody to do something good, not to hurt people, but like, by golly, you know, like social justice, this has to be set right. You know, a, a good anger, setting boundaries or a good fear. Well, what's a good fear? Well, a good fear is like, you know what? It's a healthy fear. I should be afraid of, uh, you know, climbing this cliff because I don't have a lot of skills and I'll probably die. I shouldn't do things I'm afraid of. I want fear as my friend. Fear should guide me to what I can and can't do. And what what is unhealthy love? Well, a stalker, you know, if somebody, somebody feels a lot of love for somebody, but it's not reciprocated in the way they want, they become increase, increasingly controlling. I mean, there's very unhealthy love. People get stuck on loving something that doesn't reciprocate and they become controlling and or unhealthy happiness, addictions, you know, oh, I really like this. I think I'll just yeah. wait my life and just do this. Okay. So anything can be healthy or unhealthy, depending on how you handle it. So, so this is the bottom line. Don't be afraid of your emotions. Use mindfulness to sort out what am, what's going on here. And yes, there are two basic categories of emotions. There's sort of the green light emotions of like something's good. Let's go for it. So that would be all the happy stuff, all the joyful stuff. Um, love trust gratitude all that kind of stuff something something it's a green light from my nature it's like something's good let's go for it and then there's sort of the red light emotions of like stop something's not right it doesn't feel good so fear anger guilt anxiety depression all the stuff that like i think i should not keep running with this i should i need to stop and figure out what's going on something needs changing in my life mm -hmm. um so the basic emotional technique is embracing your emotions, and I call it a 20-minute emotion meditation. Set a timer for 20 minutes and really go into that emotion. Accept yourself. Embrace yourself. It's like, oh, gosh, anger? Oh, I can't feel anger. I'm going to, like, be a horrible person and smash things. No, because you're making a safe space for yourself. I'm just going to feel this anger intensely for 20 minutes. Mm -hmm. I may scream and rage a bit, but I know I'm not going to go out and shoot anyone, so it's safe. And what happens is you you identify the emotions, you feel it for 20 minutes. At the end of 20 minutes, let it go and go do something fun, something you prefer. That's asserting your power 
as a, as a creator, as a human being who can make decisions. I felt my unpleasant emotion. Now I'm going to do something pleasant. Um, you know, eat a snack, pet a pet, sing a song, take a walk, whatever, something pleasant. And then now just let it go and let it be. And don't be surprised if everything shifts. New intuitions, new perspectives will come to you. New solutions will come to you. So you, you can change your life and you will no longer be stuck with the people who made you angry and that's why you needed to do 20 minutes of anger you know or you'll no longer be stuck with being afraid of getting out there and trying something because you started realizing like you know i'm the kind of person who needs to do this kind of thing the world will accept me the world there are people my tribe i'm going to find my tribe i'm going to find i'm you see what i'm saying uh, you, yeah so exactly step one i'm, I'm following you 100 yes well, so step one identify and accept your emotion. Mm -hmm. Step two, feel it for 20 minutes intensely, safely, but intensely. Be, a, be an actor, be a, you know, get dramatic. Step three, let it go and do something fun, the kind of thing you prefer in life. And step four, just let it go and do other stuff, but be aware new, a whole new consciousness is gonna to come to you to shift your life. That's how emotions work for you. Okay, great. And on that, we'll end that note. That's a perfect ending. Um, and we do appreciate um, all of us. Um, this channel is me and the viewers. All of us appreciate you coming on, Carl. And um, remember, this is Carl Johan Schroeder, Inner Selves Mastery. I'll have the links to some of his um, um, information below in the description box and i want everybody to comment that you know i love your comments and um until next time let's get where i am let's see where i am in here yeah until next time everybody stay 